Haven't we all bought into the marketing hype at this point? Isn't it just common knowledge that a Snapdragon PC like the Surface Pro 11th Gen is going to have longer battery life, be snappier, and use less energy than the equivalent Intel version of the Surface Pro 11? Well, is that really the case? I decided to find out. So I hooked up a power meter to each of these devices, this one being a Snapdragon Plus, and this one is a Lunar Lake Surface Pro 11th Gen. They're both roughly the same device other than the difference in the chip manufacturer. But before we get to those results, a word from our sponsor. What's that? Oh. Um, we don't have any sponsors, so I guess I'll sponsor myself. The C Butters Tech Performance Fan. It's specially designed to fit your Surface Pro device, whether you want to keep it cool or legitimately enhance your sustained performance by reducing throttling. The performance fan attaches easily via USB-C or a USB-A option and lets you keep running cooler, faster, and longer. Lots of details on the product page. Get your C Butters Tech performance fan at surfacefan.myshopify.com. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna to try to make it easy for you. The Snapdragon version of the Surface Pro 11 is always gonna be on the left. It's always gonna have the black keyboard on it. The Intel version is always going to be on the right. It's always going to have the blue keyboard on it. On the power meter, the C1 is the Snapdragon and the C2 is the Intel version. Let's go ahead and get into a couple real world action items, including Teams calls, idling, downloading and installing, and several other real world tasks where the results of which one of these is using more power may actually surprise you. So just a quick note about the power consumption methodology that I used in this video. Basically what I did is I connected both of these Surface Pro devices to the same power meter. I let them be charged to 100% so they were the batteries were absolutely full so no amount of power could go to the battery. It was all being used to run the processing. Um, also both of the devices were put in their factory default states power states on the snapdragon this was the recommended setting and on the intel this was the best power efficiency setting as they do vary a little bit in the way that they're configured and what they call things don't know why but that's just the way it is so let's take a look at these results okay so a simple teams call i called one surface device with the other and looked and saw what the power consumption was. At this point in time, you can see that the Intel is using 10 watts and the Snapdragon is actually using 12 watts. Now, they evened out at about 12 watts here. And then later on, what I'll do is I'll play with the studio effects and see if that has any impact on the difference in power consumption. You can see they're pretty equal here. Now when we switch to sharing the screen, you can see they both drop down to 10 watts and they're pretty equal the whole way through. But you've got the power meter there so you can make your own decision. We're getting ready to run a benchmark here. You can see at idle they both use around 4 watts. So then I performed a Geekbench test and this is sped up so you can watch how the power fluctuates on both sides of things without having to sit through a really long video. But uh, the point is, is they each use very similar power. Uh, occasionally, you'll see the Snapdragon uses up to 54 watts. Occasionally, the Intel uses up to 44 watts. Uh, overall, uh, I would say the Snapdragon seemed a little more efficient in this test. But overall, they look very similar in their power consumption. Okay, and of course the score. You can see their single core scores were pretty much equal, 2272 versus 2250. However, the multi-core score on the Intel version was a little bit less. However, uh, if you do, there is a way to make that higher by bumping up the power profile on the Intel side, but at the same rough level of power consumption, it is a slight bit slower in this test. Here's another test that really surprised me. We're downloading uh, games here using Steam's platform, 
And what this does is it kind of downloads and installs at the same time. So you not only have a download going, which is activating your Wi-Fi, but it's also, you know, activating your SSD to install the game. And you can see that the Snapdragon platform actually is using about 20 watts to do this, where the Intel platform is only using 14 watts to do this. Uh, this, despite uh, the peak rates seemingly a little higher on the Intel side as well. So I found this to be very interesting. So this is another super interesting one. We're doing 3D gaming, Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. And the interesting thing here is, uh, go ahead and pause if you need you to see throughout here. You will see the Intel's using almost double the power a lot of the time but if you look at the frame rate you'll see you're getting more than double the performance in frame rate the intel graphic solution is much better than the snapdragon solution uh, and i'll show you later you can actually have roughly the same performance at the same wattage if you tune that igpu down a little bit so they're Efficiency is the same, but you can get a ton more performance on the Intel side, which to me is a perk. I mean, seriously, look at the difference in performance there. It's huge. Okay, so let's look at some YouTube 4K video playback. I made sure they're both set to the same settings, 2160p. And you can see the Snapdragon has a slight advantage here. It's using about 10 watts, while the Intel is using 12 but once we bump it up into full screen, you can see they kind of both actually level out to about six watts. Now this could be, you know, some driver optimization that uh, needs to be worked on. Uh, but in general, you still see the Snapdragon a little more power efficient in the video test. Uh, for a lot of the period, they were there at six and six, but sometimes that Snapdragon drops down to four watts. Again, uh, these do use different panels. The one on the left is an LCD panel and the one on the right is an OLED panel. So there may be a little bit of difference going on because of this. Okay, sleep and idle. I'm going to shut down both of these and put them in sleep mode and we'll watch what the power consumption does. You can see they both start off kind of at four watts and when they go into sleep mode, they both drop down to two watts while they're shutting down, probably because the screens are off. And then they both go to zero watts, which is really good. Um, I use both of these as a digital manual viewing a PDF as I was building a 3D printer for hours and hours on end and I really didn't notice any difference in how long the battery lasted between the two of them when using idle and the, occasionally the screens would turn off as I was working on something. I really didn't notice a difference in battery life between the two. Okay, I want to show one more game, and there's a reason for this. Let's get our power meter back on so you can see what's going on. You can see we're both idling at 4 watts. Uh, we see the <laughs> idle behavior is very similar between these two devices. But let's look at this game. This is, this is interesting because the Snapdragon is actually using um, <laughs> 16 watts versus 6 on the Intel. So we go ahead and press a button. I'm sure once we actually load into the game, that will not be the case. But you can see here that the Adreno doing 30 frames a second, both of these are doing 30 frames a second. The Intel's only using eight watts, Snapdragon is using 15.8. Okay, now you can see that the Intel's ramped up and it is really cruising. It's using 42 watts, but also we're getting 114, 115 frames per second over here. And on this side, we get 47. So, but yeah, much smoother on the Intel side, but there's also a couple things that we're missing. For example, the Intel side of things has a control panel. So if I wanted to change my scaling mode, if I want to have variable refresh rate controls, um, I can do all that in here. So if I want, uh, to do something like frame limit, like say, okay, well, I want to limit my frames at 60 frames a second now. Okay, so now I can game at a smooth 60 frames per second, where this one's stuck over here at 50, and we're using basically the same wattage. 
So if you want to have the Snapdragon performance uh, <laughs> at the same wattage and power settings, you can have it. But if you want to double your frame rate, you can do that. And sure, you'll use some more power, get a little bit more heat, but you'll get a much better gameplay experience. And the only reason that I bring up the control panel of all things is Snapdragon doesn't have one accessible to the user. They promised on a slide deck when they announced these chips that they were going to have this, and we still don't. And it's a kind of a big deal. I mean, you don't need to have control over a lot of these granular things, but the quality of life on that is so much better when you have the ability to tune and tweak and do the things you want to with the graphics driver. There's no other graphics out there that doesn't provide basic controls. And I'd like to see Snapdragon address this. It would go a long way. They know it's important. They include it on the original slide deck. They just have not delivered. So I hope this comparison has been useful to you. Um, I just... Uh, don't get me wrong, the Snapdragon is a very efficient processor. It's very good. And versus, and, and to be honest, versus the Surface Pro 9, it was worlds ahead of it. But if you actually compare it generationally, generationally to the Lunar Lake Intel uh, chip, there's actually some very clear benefits to choosing the Intel chip. You have zero compatibility issues versus a Snapdragon ARM. You actually, in many cases, get better efficiency. You saw the, you saw the video. I'm trying to be objective and, and let you guys make your own conclusions. That's why I left the power meter on the screen the whole time so you can draw your own conclusions. Um, but in many cases, especially doing a Steam download, uh, doing a Teams meeting, uh, all sorts of things, there was very little difference in the power consumption for doing the same task. And on top of that, when you do load up any program that uses 3D rendering, the graphic solution on Lunar Lake is just so far ahead, double the performance, um, that I think it makes, if you're just looking from what can the machine do, the Intel version is miles ahead of the Snapdragon. And I think Microsoft knows this too. There's a reason that the Intel version of the Surface Pro 11th Gen costs on average about $400 more. So that, that's, a, that's a big jump. That's a lot of money to have to throw to get the Intel version of this machine. Um, but I think so many people are caught up in saying that the Snapdragon is so much more efficient, so much better and all these things, when if you actually look at the data in today's world, June 2025, that's not necessarily the case. So anyways, um, I feel like I'm making the same video over and over again, and, and I've covered the Snapdragon a lot, and I don't, I don't think it's bad. I just think as consumers, you need to be aware of what the hardware is really capable of and not just go off what the marketing messages are trying to sell you on. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Um, if you want to pick up a Surface Fan for your Surface device or an external GPU enclosure, Check out my store, link in the description below, and thanks for watching.